Oh, yippee, you wouldn't believe it. The Emperor came through on his word, and all of us got brand new warrior armor. Wow, I just feel so strong and capable wearing these new duds. This armor is just so grand. All our enemies will cower in fear and cover their eyes as the sun perfectly shines off my metallic pecs. Oh, oh, oh I better stand up. Hello there, folks, and welcome to Dice Chatter. My name is Donnie, and today we are going to create some spell effects that you can use in your Frostgrave games. Some spells in Frostgrave, like Wall, Mud, and Bridge, create permanent effects on the table. At least until they are dispelled. So why not craft and create them? Now, there are plenty more spells that would make awesome creations, but I'll save those for a future video. I only have so much time in my day, especially when half of it is getting into my ridiculous costumes. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Another brick in the wall. The wall spell. An easy, fun, and satisfying build. I'll read the spell details as I get my supplies ready. It states, This spell creates a 6 inch long, 3 inch high wall, part of which must be within 10 inches and line of sight of the spellcaster. This wall can be climbed as normal, blah 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 blah. Alright, so we have our build dimensions. 6 inches by 3 inches. Let's get to work. Getting some 1 inch thick insulation foam will be perfect here. I simply cut out a slightly larger 6 inch by 3 inch rectangle, maybe about a quarter of an inch or so. This is to give us a little leeway when I start carving away at this foam with a blade. The wall I am going for here is less of a brick wall and more of a section of soil that has been carved out of the earth's surface. Think of an earthbender who slammed rock and stone up from the ground to create a massive barricade. I make sure to shave away the foam in a vertical pattern. No need to be perfect, just make sure no smooth surface from the foam is still present. And don't carve away at the bottom, of course. Keep that flat and smooth so it can be placed on the table without falling over. Once we are happy with our little wall, we go right into the good old Mod Podge step. Make sure you go over every nook and cranny to give this foam wall some toughness and vigor. Of course, after the podge, I prime the wall black and we can get on over to painting. Uh, don't mind me here, I'm just messing with some lights, I guess? These are the paints and inks I use during this process. Nothing too fancy, and I'm sure you can make a similar product with other cheap craft store paints. We begin with a dark gray dry brush. Anytime you see me grab this makeup brush, just assume I am dry brushing. My plan here was to sort of show off layers of earth. The base of everything will be gray, but higher up the wall will have more brown tones to signify soil rather than hardy rocks. There really is no method to my madness here. Keep it simple, take your time, and go light on the dry brushing with brighter colors such as yellow and off-white. I used some inks here and there as well and dabbed them around the wall where it seemed appropriate, just to spice it up and not make the wall look so boring. I mean, there is only so much you can do for a wall, I guess. I did try to make the very top of the wall look like soil you would walk on, giving it you know, some static grass and grass tufts here and there, but in the end, I just didn't really like how it looked, and I just later removed everything best I could. One final step for this quick build, this spell isn't very sturdy since it was made out of foam. We need to add some weight to the build. Simply enough, cut a decent sized hole in the bottom of the foam, take currency that you will never imagine using ever again, and start shoving it in the wall. To cap it off, I just use some hot glue and let it cool down. And now this wall won't fall over from your opponent's fart flying across the table. So there you have it folks, the wall spell. Total time for this build, not including dry time, I'd say it was probably about 30 minutes to an hour. A simple idea, yet a very neat looking end product. Alrighty, let's move on to spell number two. Get your rain boots. The mud spell. We gotta make a brown circle. I'll read the spell details as I get my supplies ready. It states, All ground within three inches of a target point becomes rough ground. I, that's it. Alrighty, that seems simple enough. Let's get started. For the base of the mud spell, I had some hardboard lying around, very thin, about a sixteenth of an inch or so. Also, ignore the circle I cut out in this step. It's the wrong size. I'll fix it later. I promise. But once you have everything cut out, I make sure to give the edges a light bevel. The base is then pretty much ready for the slathering of my favorite mud texture, Vallejo Thick Mud. But there is a problem. Someone 
left the cap off, and it has been solidified. So, well, I guess I'll go for the next best stuff, some Vallejo Desert Sand. The color of the product at this point doesn't really matter, as we will be priming over everything anyways. So with this texture paste, we just slather it all over the circular base and give it a basic thin coat, and prime the whole thing black. See, I promised I'd fix the base size, so let's move on over to painting. For this circular mud spell, I decided to go with a darker rather than a lighter soil color, so I tend to stick with dark browns at the beginning of the dry brushing steps and work my way up to the lighter tans and oranges. You can't really mess up here, it's just some damn mud. Now, while I go dry brush mad, I'll chat about two methods I thought about for giving this mud a glossy effect. I figure some gloss on the spell will better show what it truly is, just some wet dirt. The goal of this gloss would be to create a protective cover over the train piece, and I thought of two decent options. One was near and dear to all crafters' hearts, the glossy Mod Podge, which is definitely a cheaper option. While the other option was some Vallejo Stillwater mix. I feel the water mix looked better after everything dried up, but the application process is the same for both. Cover up the entire terrain piece and let it dry. It's as simple as that, folks. And we have the Mud Spell. A quick and easy build once again. Project time, probably under 30 minutes. The drying time though, probably an overnighter. Alrighty, one more spell left, and it's a neat one. It's made of stone! Sure, this bridge looks like it's made up of tiny cobblestone bricks, when really it's just some pre-cut insulation foam. I'll read the spell details as I get my supplies ready. It states, Place a bridge 6 inches long and 2 inches wide anywhere that is completely in line of sight of the spellcaster. Now there's a lot more to the spell that I could read, but that's the important part we need to know. Now we have our dimensions. For starters, we need to make the main support for the bridge, and I went ahead and cut out our 6 inch by 2 inch rectangle with some chipboard, and then we just simply start gluing on a bunch of bricks on the base. I had a lot of these little pieces sliced and diced from a previous project. I believe the squares are one centimeter by one centimeter, and the smaller rectangles are half a centimeter by one centimeter. With the two size bricks, it won't look as stale or basic if we just used one specific size. And I was going for a run down and beaten up cobblestone bridge. Nothing too fancy or crazy. Once everything is glued down, you can really see that there is some warping with the chipboard, as it is a very thin material, you know, cereal box material. I just snagged a popsicle stick and hot glued it to the bottom to help prevent any warping in the future. And would you look at that, a 50 mil base fits perfectly on the bridge. Pretty neat, things are looking good. But I want to add more grit to the bridge, some dirt and stones. To do this, I made a slurry out of play sand, water, and some white PVA glue. I take this slurry and plop it on the bridge in sections where some sediment may have built up. You know, the nooks and crannies between the cobblestone bricks. And once that is done, we mod podge the entire build like we did with the wall spell and prime the terrain piece black. So now let's jump on over to painting. For the bridge, I pretty much use all the same paints I have used for the other two builds. I do a heavy dry brush with some darker gray and then start leading and building up towards brighter and brighter colors. Of course, I throw a few skid marks of brown and tan over the rubble we glued on during the last step and I use some green and brown inks to add some more interesting colors to the bridge. Once all this dries, you have yourself a lovely bridge spell. Quick and simple, just like the other two builds. Total time for this spell? Around 30 minutes to an hour, not including dry time. So there you have it folks, three spells that you can use in your Frostgrave games. I'm going to enjoy using these little terrain creations, as I'm sure they will work for you as well. Let me know in the comments if this is content you enjoy and would like to see in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all the other socials. I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.